Hi and welcome to another video update from the Fire Brigade Union here at the Union's head office in London. This time it's about the vital issue of firefighters' pensions. We're joined by the Union's General Secretary, Matt Rack. Matt, this is to do with the legal challenge that the Union mounted after the imposition of the 2015 scheme. I mean, this has gone on for quite a considerable period of time. First of all, can you refresh us in the background to this case? Yeah, Tan, the, the, the background is, as you say, the imposition of the, the new pension scheme in 2015 and the question of protection. This is about the people uh, who's, who were in the old 1992 scheme and were effectively not covered by the full protection and have been forced into the, the, the new scheme. Uh, so there are uh, lots of members affected and our argument is about the, the fact that we don't think the protection is adequate. We've got a legal case that says that we think there are discrimination elements within that protection. Uh, so we've been working for a long time. It's quite a complicated uh, case to build a legal argument that, uh, to challenge the government on those protection ar arrangements and try and uh, win further improvements for members. Now, you've recently sent a circle out to all FBU members, given an update, and this mentions a judge's case. I mean, what's the judge's case got to do with the firefighters' case? Well, I think there's ourselves and the judges who've identified this is uh, issues around potential uh, discrimination. Uh, so the, the circle has gone out today. Uh, the, um, it, it draws attention to our legal case. Uh, and the judge's case, I think it's important to remember, it's two different pension schemes, so it's not the same. It's two different pension schemes. They have their own. There is a ju judge's pension scheme, as there is a firefighter's pension scheme. They've obviously found arguments relating to their pension arrangements and the changes made to that that they are challenging on. Similarly, we've got uh, we've identified issues relating to our pension scheme and particularly around the tra uh, transitional protection that we're attempting to challenge on. Clearly, though, they're both public sector pension schemes and there's going to be overlaps in the arguments that are made so it's a very important case for us and we're watching that. That case has now started and is scheduled for the next few days in court and we'll be monitoring that with our legal team uh, and if anything comes out of that and there has been some press reporting of it, if anything comes out of that then clearly we'll take account of that for our case but also report it to members as well. Okay, I mean, that's the judge's side of stuff and also how it links in. But for all of us affected by this pension situation, I suppose the key question is, what's the timescales involved with this? And actually, what's the complexities of the issues as we move forward into the future? The, the timescales, I, I, I don't want to be too precise on that, except that we, we, we've, uh, we're we now at the stage where uh, we have submitted our documentation. I think we can show that to, to people a bit later. There's, there's a huge level of documentation so this is that all the paperwork uh, between different parts of the government between the government and the tr uh, TUC between the government and ourselves it's a lot of paperwork that's had to be go gone through and we can we can show that to members uh, later uh, and uh, we've had to draw all that together we're also just in the process of signing off our witness statements on so myself and the national officer Sean Starbuck are submitting witness statements to that court but it's not it, this isn't a sort of tra traditional trial this is primarily uh, an examination of all the documentation uh, and the relevant legislation and whether we've got a case uh, based on that, uh, that evidence that we've managed to draw together. Thanks, Matt. Just finally, I mean, this has been an issue that has caused huge controversy across the fire service, affected vast numbers of firefighters in a very detrimental way, and it's only the Fire Brigade Union that has taken this situation on. And well done that. Well, yeah, we, we've uh, been very... I mean, I think... It, I mean, she's still angers me and I'm sure it angers a lot of people what the government have done, different governments have done to our pensions, uh, it's, it's, dis, it's disgraceful. Um, we assured people that we would examine every possible way of challenging them and we've done that. Uh, it was a long hard slog to get there, we've got there, I think the more research we've done, uh, the more we've discussed it with our legal advisors, that, that, that you know, we're confident we've got a good case. I don't want to preempt the outcome of anything, but we're confident we've got a good case that we can take to court. Um, that's, that's done for us. Like other cases, yes, it's, it's run by the FBU. Uh, as we did on the commutation case, people may remember, in that case, it wasn't just FBU members who won. There were other, other people and there were police officers who benefited from it. Uh, with this case, I don't know what the outcome would be if we were successful. I suspect it might have implications beyond the fire service. But we're determined as a union, we will fight these attacks on our members as, as in every way that we possibly can.
Matt, thanks very much. For further updates on this issue, and indeed on all issues, please visit our website. That's www.fbu.org.uk. Or you can follow us on Twitter. That's at FBU National. And finally, we've got a Facebook page simply called the Fire Brigade Union. But until next time, thanks very much, Matt. Thanks, Tom. Thanks, Tom.